I read a lot of books about painting and one book that I read recently has had a big impact on the way that I now paint. In this video, I want to share with you how this book has helped me to grow as an artist. Hazel Soane's Art of the Limited Palette is a beautiful book all about how to work in watercolour with a limited palette. It's easy to read and it's filled with beautiful examples of Hazel's paintings. This book has not only provided me with a deeper understanding of colour theory, temperature bias and how to mix colours, it's also shown me how important it is to try to limit the number of colours that I use in each of my paintings. So what is a limited palette and why is it important, particularly to artists who work with watercolour? A limited palette relies on the idea that you choose the least amount of colours possible to achieve the colours you need for your painting. It's all about the idea that the primary colours red, yellow and blue can mix together to produce a full range of colours. A limited palette might be one where you use two to four colours to mix everything you need for your painting. It's a less is more approach to painting. It's important for watercolour artists because it's easier to achieve colour harmony with fewer colours. As well as that, you are less likely to create mud when you're mixing because you're not using as many colours. Hazel mentions that using a limited palette is not limiting at all. It's freeing. And I agree. When you start using a limited palette, it frees you up so that instead of thinking about colour, you can focus on things like the subject, tonal value and the composition. As well as that, if you aren't using as many colours, you begin to understand the colours that you are using. You learn about their properties quicker and how they interact on the paper together and that's important. The information in this book has changed the way I paint. In the past, I didn't give colour much thought. I rarely mixed colours, mainly because I didn't know how. I told myself that there were so many beautiful pre-mixed colours available to buy, why would I bother trying to mix my own? As a result, when I pull some of my old paintings out and have a look at them, I can see that some of the colours I used weren't the best choice. One of the greens I used in this painting was thallow yellow green, straight out of the tube. It's too bright and it looks artificial looking. I should have mixed my own green from the yellow that I used on the corn. This book has also taught me about the importance of learning about the temperature bias of colours and how the temperature of each colour has an impact on the colours that you're mixing. It opened my eyes to many things and I think it has made me a better painter. The days of using colour straight out of the tube and paying no attention to how many colours I was using are over. Now I spend time before I start painting trying to work out how I can achieve the colours I need from as few colours as possible. This was one of the first paintings I completed after reading the book. With this painting, I used only two colours and I was able to mix everything I needed from them. I used Windsor Green Blue Shade and Permanent Rose. Before I started my painting, I mixed the two colours together in varying ratios. I started with Permanent Rose and I added small amounts of Windsor Green to it. And I was able to make all of these different colours. I started with the colours quite pale and I gradually created the form of the flowers by layering darker tones over the top. The challenge of using only two colours actually freed me to forget about colour and focus on tonal value. And even though this painting has many layers, it retains its translucency. Here's a painting I did using just three colours. Permanent Rose, Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine. And I was able to mix everything I needed with those three colours. I mixed Permanent Rose with Burnt Sienna for the overall skin colour. And I was able to use all three colours combined to paint the variations in the skin colour. I added some French Ultramarine to Burnt Sienna and that gave me the dark brown that I needed for the hair. Mixing the dark colour gives the added bonus of colour separation on wet paper. 
So when you are painting on the wet paper, the colours will separate slightly, creating beautiful variations that can't be achieved by using a pre-mixed dark brown. I used the same colour on the t-shirt, but it was heavily diluted with water. I just wanted a hint of colour here. Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine also gave me this dark colour, but this time I used more of the blue in the mixture. So this really is a great little book. It's separated into two parts. The first section covers how a limited palette works. It talks about the properties of colours. It covers the temperature bias of colours and how that affects the colours that you mix. And I found that really helpful. And then it describes different colour combinations and how they work together. The second half of the book shows how Hazel has put the information in the first half of the book into practice. There are lots of examples of Hazel's paintings and she talks about why and how she chose the colours she did. And there's a few simple demonstrations as well where you can see progress photos of her paintings. It really has opened my eyes. It's been a game changer for me because it's changed the way I approach my paintings now. I love that it's really easy to understand which makes it a book that I come back to time and time again. So if you want to add to your painting library, I highly recommend this little book. If you want to learn to paint in watercolour, head to my website where you will find information about my online watercolour classes. I put a link in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Shall I do that again? Shake it. Shall I do that again? Yep. Don't shake it because it's how we've done it before. Okay. It's easy to read and it's filled with beautiful examples of Hazel's paintings. Shall I do that again because of Leah? What, do you, what should I say? That you are less, it's important because it's easier to achieve with fewer. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're not using. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Why did you say the written there? Few. So this really is no. Is an aeroplane? Yeah. Could be a train. Aeroplane. Is it a plane? Yeah. Something. They do this when I'm trying to do voiceover and I've got to stop for ages.